Today on The Joy of Editing, it's TK Friday. In fact, it's the last TK Friday of the year. I'm going to finish the year out with a full edit. I'm entitling this one, Bird's Eye View. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing. It's the last TK Friday of the year. I want to wish everybody a happy new year coming up and happy editing to all. I hope everyone is enjoying the holiday season. Today's image comes to us by Tony Nicolarci, and hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, Tony. Forgive me if I'm not. I'm entitling this one, Bird's Eye View. I really like this image a lot. I love what's going on in the background. And as always, you can download this image as well as the PDF notes. I'll have Dropbox links in the description below. You got to click on more to open up that description. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find the Dropbox links. Also, if you have an image you would like me to edit on a TK Friday, scroll down even further and you'll find a contact me link. Click on that link, contact me, and we can discuss doing one of your images on a TK Friday. And thanks all of you out there who have sent me images in for TK Fridays. I really appreciate it. And by the way, if you don't yet own the TK9 plugin for Photoshop, you can save 15% off the TK9 plugin for Photoshop along with training videos. Use my promo code DK15. That gets you 15% off of everything. Not only are you saving money, but you're supporting the joy of editing with Dave Kelly when you use that promo code DK15. So thank you all for using my promo code. I really appreciate it. All right, then let's get started. Now, as always, I start out here in Lightroom. I'm using a linear profile for Tony's camera, and I basically click auto and make sure I'm not clipping my whites or blacks so I don't lose any detail in whites and blacks. And I also use just a little bit of basic sharpening on this image, and I also have used lens corrections. I have checked on remove chromatic aberration as well as enable profile corrections and that's basically it. But I almost forgot to tell you I did crop this image so let me click on this crop button and there you can see I did a pretty aggressive crop on this image so there is my crop. And now at this point I would just right click the image go to edit in edit in Photoshop 2024 but I'm already there. And here we are in Photoshop 2024, ready to get started with Photoshop and the TK9 plugin for Photoshop. All right, so on this image, I have a subject, which is the bird, and I believe this is a pygmy cormorant, and I'm probably wrong. And if I am, let me know in the comment section below. Hey, and also please leave comments and questions. I really love to hear from everyone out there. And if you'll do me a big favor, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This really helps to promote my channel, The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. And when you do that, I truly appreciate it and thank you. Now, I always like to start out by doing a balance and contrast on the image. It's a great starting point for me. And I do this on every TK Friday. And if you watch every week, you know I do this. Again, as I said, we have a subject and we have a background. Now, we do have a button on the combo and CX panel here for subject. And you could do a command or control click and it'll save that out in channels and then hold your command or control key down and double click it and that'll save out the background in your channels but i'm going to give you a heads up here i did do that and i had a little bit of an issue and i'll show you what i mean i'm not going to hold my command or control key down but i'm just going to click on subject right there and as you can see it selects my subject but it misses part of the bird's foot here the web foot so what i'm doing is i'm going to grab the object selection tool I'm in the lasso mode and what I'm going to do is hold my shift key down and just drag around this area right here and make sure I have that all selected. It missed this little spot here so I'm going to get my lasso tool. I'm just typing L. I'm holding the shift key down and I'll just circle around this just like that right. Now I'll go back to my object selection tool because it's overshot the bird here. Photoshop thinks this is part of the bird which it's not. So now if you hold your option key down, you can come around here and subtract that out of the selection just like that. Oh, and it's missed a little spot right here. So I'm going to hold my option key down and just it included an area it shouldn't have included right there. That's going to be stubborn. So I'll get my lasso tool. I'll type L, hold my option key down, and I will just drag around there and remove that section right there. Okay, so now my bird is selected and 
I need to save this out as a channel. So we're going to go to the Commodore CX panel and click this button right here. And under name, I'm going to call this subject. Could call it bird, but I'll call it subject. Click OK. And now we could come here on the combo or CX panel, click this button to invert selections. Now don't mistake it for this invert button, which will invert a pixel layer, but this will invert a selection, this button right here. So click that. And now we have the background and now we can click this same button here and save that out as let's just do BG for background and I'll click OK. So now I have my subject and background saved out as channels. I'll work on the background first and then the subject, but I need two color grading tools with Midtones 3 masks on them to protect me from clipping shadows and highlights. And I do this on every TK Friday. You see me do this every week. So I'm gonna click this button right here for luminosity masks and I'm gonna use Midtones 3. So we're gonna click this button right here. I'm gonna output that to a color grading tool and there you can see there's my color grading tool here, which is a curves adjustment layer, but there's my color grading tool with a mid three mask on it. And now I'm going to click this button to duplicate it. So now I have two color grading layers. I'm going to come back and make the first layer active. And now we're going to do the background first. And I'll show you how we do that. What we need to do is go to our mask calculator. Now with the mask calculator, if you hold your command or control key down and click on the mask calculator button, the layer mask calculator button, by the way, it will keep it open until you click this X here. So what we want is the background. So we're going to click on BG for background. And now I need to intersect it into this mask right here. Okay. And to do that, click on this X for intersect. And now we can see the bird is dropped out. It is all black, but now the background has the uh, midtones three mask on it. And now we can do the balance and contrast and a little bit of color grading in that background, which will really help here. So we're going to start out, we'll click on the shadow button. And I want to darken the shadows, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. I'm going to drag this slider to the left. Now you don't see anything change here until you release the left click of your mouse. I'm going to take this over to right here, minus 21. I don't want to go too dark. And next I'll go to midtone. So we'll click on the midtone button and I'm going to open up those midtones and I'm going to go pretty far to the right here to right here, 49. Now I do want to color grade this and I want to warm it up. And I was like right around here now. See the cursor right there, the tip of my cursor. If I click right here, it'll drop a color grade there. You see that? But I want to make sure I get the number right. So I'm going to click right here in this field and look at the number of my notes. This is a hexadecimal number. And what I'll do is grab the number from my notes, which is A09166. And then we'll click this button to accept it. And I'll make sure I got that same color grade that I got. And I just experiment till I find one that pleases my eye. And I like that. And now that I've color graded the midtones, and I love this orangish yellow glow back here. I think that's beautiful. I'm going to go back to shadow. So click on the shadow button. And I just want to offset that warm tone with a little bit of blue. Not much, just a little bit. And I'm just going to get the number off my notes. So I'm going to click on this field right here and type in the number, which is 15171D. And then we'll click this button to accept it. And there is that little bit of a blue color grade there just to offset the warm tones in the shadows. And now we're going to go to highlights. And I just want to open up the highlights. And we're going to open those up to right here, 41. So let me shut this layer off by clicking the eye. Here's before. And now here is after. And now we can turn our attention to the bird. So let's click on the top color grading layer and make it active. And the layer mask calculator is still open. So now we're going to click on subject. And now we need to intersect the subject with the midtone three mask. So we'll click this button. And now we can see there is the bird with midtones three. I'm done with the layer mask calculator for now. So I'm going to click the X to close it to get my combo panel back. And now let's give our subject, the bird, some balance and contrast. So I'll start out with shadows. I'll click on the shadows button. So I don't want to darken up the shadows too much, just a little bit. So I'm going to take this slider and drag it to the left to right there. Minus eight. Let me click this layer off. So there's before and there's after. So it's very minimal as you can see because the bird's already really dark, right? And now we're going to go to midtones and we're going to open up the midtones a good bit. And I'm going to drag the slider over to the right to right there, plus 56. Now let's shut this layer off. Here is the before on the subject and here's the after. 
And now I really like the bird. He's standing out and he looks cool with the background. But we're going to work on the background a little bit next. And my philosophy in editing is after I'm done with my balance and contrast, I get it looking the way I like it. Now I study the image and see what I would like to alter or to change. And for me, the background, I love this beautiful glowing background. I really want to bring up the saturation and maybe shift the tint a little bit warmer. So we're going to do that next. All right. So right now, my color grading tool is in the way of my multi mask panel. So I'm going to click this X to close the color grading tool. Nothing changes on these layers. So for color, a good mask is always, you know, a color mask. So we're going to click this button to get a color mask. And I just need to find some of the color in the background. And I can really click anywhere around here. But I ended up clicking like right here and clicked OK. And now we can see how we've selected that color. Yeah, and it's done a really nice job. Now, I'm not even going to touch these sliders here. I'm just going to take this brightness slider and drag it over to the right to somewhere right around here just to brighten up that area like that. And now we're going to output this to what do you think? It's color, right? So let's go with a hue saturation adjustment layer. So we'll click this button right here and we'll have that mask on there. And now what I'll do is increase the saturation. So I'm going to take this to the right and I think I'm going to go to like right here plus 29 and now i want to shift that hue a little bit warmer so i'm going to drag this slider to the left over here to like minus 10 i like that and let's just slightly lighten it we have a lightness slider here and just a little bit of lightness to like plus three so let me shut this layer off by clicking this eye here's the before and here's the after isn't that beautiful here's the before and here's the after I get excited. Now, I really like this. Now, as I study the image, I am looking at the bird here and some of the light areas of the bird I'd like to bring up a little bit. And to do that, what we'll do is come up to my channels, click on the my channels button. We'll click on subject. And now we're going to click on the mask calculator. And now we're going to do an intersect. So we'll click the X for intersect. And now we're going to come up and click on the luminosity mask button. And I'm just looking for the light areas of the bird and lights one is going to get that. So we'll leave it on lights one, but I just want to refine this a little bit. So I'm going to click on my levels adjustment button right here to refine that a little bit. And all I want to do is pull in the highlight slider to the left to right over to right about here. I'll take the shadow slider and bump it to the right a little bit to right here. And let me just pull the midtones to the left a little bit to lighten them up to right there. And now we need to make that calculation. So click the equal button. And now you can see we have our bird. And now we need to output the selection. So I'm going to use a dodge tool. So here's our dodge tool button right here. It has two sides to it. You can use the left side for 50% gray, the right side for a transparent layer. It doesn't matter which side you use. I'm going to use the left side, so I'm going to click the left side of the dodge tool. And that gives us a selection, as you can see by the selection indicator. So we'll be dodging through a selection, targeting those light areas. And as you can see, I have a 50% gray layer. I'm in the overlay blend mode. And now I have a white brush. And right now the opacity is at 100%. I'm going to type my one key. That'll get us to 10%. I'll make my brush a little bit larger here. And all I'm going to do is paint over some of these lighter areas like this. Even in here, I want some of these light areas to come up in here as well. Up into here, over in here, maybe up here a little bit. Maybe down here a little bit more. Lighten this up. Come down into here. Lighten some of these light areas up. Okay, right into here, and even on the tail right here, we'll lighten that tail up a little bit. And here's some feathers here, some light feathers, and over in here as well. So let's take a look. Here is my before, and here is my after. So I like that. I might give this a little bit more lightening up in here, over in here just a little bit more. And paint down here. Now, every time you lift your brush and paint, you're going to add another amount of that lightening. Maybe in here, up in here a little bit. And I think I like that. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here is the after. And I think that's going to be good. Now, if you went too strong here, you could take the opacity of that layer and pull that back if you need to. I went ahead and zoomed into the image because the next thing I want to do is work on the bird's eye. I just want to bring up the color a little bit on this eye, a little bit more saturation here. Now, to target this area, I'm going to use a zone mask. So we'll click on the zone mask button and I'm going to select like a tone like right about here and click OK. 
Now, what I want to do, see the pupil of the eye? I want that to go as dark as I can get it. So what I'll do is, first off, I'm going to take this slider to tighten, and I'm going to drag this into somewhere right around here. And you see that, that area right there? Now, I would like that to go darker. So I can take this slider right here and refine that. We'll move this to the right. See how it's getting darker, the pupil? And when I get to right here, it gets really nice and dark. And now we can lighten up that selection by dragging this brightness slider to the right. And I'm going to drag it over to right here and see how nicely it lightens up. And I think we're going to be good. So the catch light is not going to get an adjustment, nor the pupil. And now we need to select this area right here. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool. And I'll just carefully kind of circle around this eye like this okay so now that's selected now we can click this button to get mask the mask so i'll click it and now you'll notice we only have the eye a gaussian blur dialog comes up and it defaults with no radius and i don't want a radius here so i'll just click ok if you want to clean up this eye around the edge a little bit you can grab this black brush on the multi mass panel right here. Give that a click. Right now my opacity is at 10%. I'm going to type my zero key to get that to 100%. And with a nice small brush, see, I can just come around here and just clean up anything it needs cleaned up. But I think we're good. And now we could refine this a little bit more and we could click the levels adjustment. And what I'll do is I'll take the highlight slider and drag it to the left a little bit just to lighten that up to somewhere right around there. I'm going to take the shadow slider, drag it in a little bit to darken the shadows up a little bit. And also I'll take the midtone slider and drag it to the left to lighten that area up a little bit more to somewhere like right about here i think is going to be good and now that we have this selection we need to output this to and again i want to work with uh, color saturation so we'll click this hue saturation button and now we can adjust that eye we can just leave this on master and i'll take the saturation and we'll drag it to the right see how i can bring that color up now you don't want to go too crazy here we just want to add a little bit of saturation and i think right there plus 38 should do it and let's lighten it up a little bit. So let's just take this to the right and take it to right there, plus five. Let me shut this layer off. This is before the eye adjustment, and this is after. And I think that's good. We don't want to go too strong here. And if you feel it's too strong, just pull back in the saturation for your taste. And now if I click this button on the combo panel, we can go back to fit the screen. And I'm just going to click this minus button one time to get it here. I just like to have a little border around the image sometimes. But let's see where we've come from so far. So on my combo panel, let's click the before after button. We started here and now we're here and I really like it. It's really moving along. So what's next? As I study the image and I look at the bird's webbed foot right here, I'm thinking this is a little bit too light here. There's a little bit, I don't know if you can notice it, but a blue color cast in here, which I'd like to get rid of. But to darken it, I'm going to use a burn tool. And I just freehanded this. And I just used the uh, burn tool from the combo panel. It's right here. Now there's two sides to it. The left side, 50% gray, just like the dodge tool right side transparent pixel layer. I'm going to use the right side and it's for a reason, the transparent pixel layer, which you'll see in a sec. But I'm going to click the right side and that gives me a burn tool. Now I need to lower the opacity to like around 20% because this is just freehand. There's no mask or selection to help me here. And what I'm going to do is just paint on the this light area right in here just to darken it up. And as I paint over here, you can see that blue really starts to pop up, right? Really starts to show up here. So I'm just painting along here. I just want to darken it up just a little wee bit. Something like that, I think, should do the trick. Now, the reason for that transparent pixel layer is if I command or control click on it, I will load what I painted on here as a selection, as you can see by the marching ants. And now what we can do is grab a hue saturation adjustment layer, click this button right here on the multi mesh panel, and it'll add that as a mask to that layer. Pretty cool, right? All I want to do is reduce the saturation there. So I'm going to take the slider and drag it to the left just so that blue goes out. You see that? Like right around there. And then I can even take this lightness slider and just darken that a little bit more. Just somewhere right around there, minus 22, minus 23. So I'm going to shut both of these layers off right here. So this is before I darkened the foot and 
this is after and i think that really helps out the next thing i want to try is to add some soft pop to this and to do that make sure your actions are open your tk actions click your tk button on the combo or cx panel and look for soft pop give it a click and there we go now that's way too strong so what i'm going to do is play with blend if i love blend if because you can see in real time the effects of different luminosity values so let's click on our edit blend if button on our multi mass panel you know i tried lights one that's what it looks like in lights one and that's not bad and then i tried midtones three and i liked it and then i went to midtones two tones it down a little bit so let me shut this off this layer i'm just clicking on this eyeball Here's before soft pop and here's after. But I really like it. It pops a little bit of detail out in some of these branches, pops the color a little bit, and I think it looks really nice. And now as I study this image, I'm looking at the bird and I'm thinking I'd like to pop some detail out in the bird. So I'll use the camera raw filter for that. So what I'll do is, see this button right here? If you command or control click this button, you will get a smart object and stamp all your layers together, which is perfect in case we need to go back and readjust what we do in the camera raw filter. I'll click the ACR button and that'll send us into the camera raw filter. And all I'm going to do here is work on texture clarity and dehaze. So I'm going to take my texture and drag it to the right. Now I'm only looking at the bird, okay? I'm not caring about the rest of the image. So I'm going to take this up to like 49. And now we're going to give it a little bit of clarity. And we're going to take this to the right over to right there. Plus 26. And then for dehaze, I'm just going to back off the dehaze a little bit. Not much. But to right like a minus 3 right there. And then we're just going to click OK. That'll send us back into Photoshop. Now I only want it on the bird, so we could click on our Layer Mask Calculator button on either the Combo or CX panel, click it, and then just click on Subject and click this button to apply it. And now it's only on the bird. So let me shut this layer off by clicking on the eye. Here's Before and here's After. But see, it just pops out some nice detail on the bird. And then if you felt that you need to alter this adjustment, just double click on Camera Raw Filter. That'll send you back into Camera Raw and then you can readjust. And now as I study the image, I'm looking at the branches on the tree. So I'd like to bring out some of the darker contrasts on those. So to do that, let's X out of Blend If. Nothing will change on any Blend If layers. Let's click on My Channels. Click on BG for the background because that's where the branches are. Click on the Mask Calculator button. Click X to intersect. Let's uh, use a luminosity mask. So we'll click this button right here. And I want darks. So here's darks one. Here's darks two. And here's darks three. And I think those are the tones I want to hit. All these lighter values will get darker. Okay, so darks three I think is good. And I tried the different channels and I decided that RGB was just as good as any of them. So I kept it on RGB. And now we need to click equal to make that calculation. And you see the bird drops out. And now what I want to do is I'll put this to a curves adjustment layer. And I want to put it in a multiply blend mode to dark. And so on the combo panel, I'll click the MUL button for multiply. And now my branches are dark. And I think they're too dark. So... I take the opacity the whole way off and then just build it up slowly. And I took it up to like right about here, 53. Let's see it before and after. I'll shut this layer off by clicking the eye. There's the before and here is the after. Yeah, and I like that increased dark contrast on the branches. I went ahead and zoomed in because I noticed this light area around the bird. Now that is not from the edit. If I go back and see the original image before the edit, by clicking the before after button. You can see that line is actually in the image itself. Let me go ahead and click the before after button again. But we can fix this. Now what we need to do is stamp this all together into one layer. Click this button right here. And we'll use a clone stamp tool. You can type S to get your clone stamp tool. And then make sure your mode for the clone stamp tool is set to darker color and not normal. So make sure it's on darker color. And then you can Option or Alt click outside of here and sample that area. And then you could just paint over that light line and it'll go away. It's like magic almost. It's really easy to do. 
just like that. And we can come up and just paint that off of there. Okay. And you know, you might say, Dave, you have a full pixel layer here. That's going to add to the file size. And if that's an issue for you, I'll show you how we can fix that. Get a lasso tool, just type L. And what I want you to do is just lasso around the area that you cloned. Make sure you leave enough space in there. Something like that. And then click this button on the combo or CX panel to invert the selection. Give it a click. And then on your keyboard, type your delete key. And now you'll just have that little area right there. See that? So it's hardly going to take up any space. And now right now we have uh, a selection here. We can click this button to deselect it. See, that'll save you some file space. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this button right here and then click the minus button one time just so I can see a little bit of border here. And now the last thing I want to do is add a vignette, but I want to keep it out of this light area up at the top. So I'll use a freehand vignette. I'll type L to get my lasso tool and we're going to draw a lasso in the shape of a, of a vignette around the image here. I'm going to come out on the outside here and come back around and go right there. And then we're going to click on freehand vignette. Now a Gaussian blur will come up. We're going to accept it just the way it is. Click OK. And now let me shut this layer off. This is before the vignette and this is after. Now I do want to protect the darkest darks. I'll use edit blend if so click on this edit blend if button and click on no darks one that'll keep it out of the darkest darks. Right now the opacity is at 30%. I'm just going to increase this to 50%. I want it a little bit stronger right there. Now let me shut this layer off. Here is the before and here is the after. Now I do have a bonus for you. This light branch is bothering me right here as well as over here. Now I did try the remove tool, Photoshop's remove tool to get rid of that. And I didn't like my results. So we have gen fill right now in Photoshop. If you don't have a TK gen fill panel yet, why not? You need one. Okay. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to get a TK gen fill panel. It's absolutely free. So get that it's great i'm going to go ahead and click this brush button right here and it defaults at 100 percent. and with a small brush i'm just going to paint over this white area right here just like so and then i'll click generate and see what we get and that looks pretty good now you get three results so you're going to find here see this left arrow and right arrow you can toggle through your three results let me click the arrow to the right here's my second result and let me click one more time. Here's my third result. And if I click forward again, it'll go back to the first one. I think I'm going to go with this one. Now you could generate again if you're not happy, but I think I'll go with that. And now I'm going to come over to this side and I'm going to click this brush button again. It defaults at 100% and I'm just going to paint over these white areas in here. And see if I can get rid of those. And now all I need to do is click generate and we'll see what kind of result we get. And that looks really good. That's the first result. Let's ramp through these. Here's the second result. Not bad. And here is the third. I'm going to go one more time to the right. That'll take me back to one. I'm going to go with that. I like it. I think it's great. Now here's a little tip for you. There's a rasterize button on the TK Gen fill panel. This layer is active. If I click rasterize, it'll go ahead and rasterize that and save some file space. And now let's click on this layer and we'll click rasterize again and we'll save some file space. So there you go. The edit is now complete. Let's see where we started from. So on my combo panel, I'll click the before button. We started out here and now we end up here. So I'm really happy with this result. And I do hope you give this edit a try. Don't forget, download the image as well as the PDF notes. Well, there it is. Another TK Friday comes to a close. I hope you enjoyed today's edit. I want to wish each and every one of you a very happy new year and happy editing. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to this channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so you'll receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I will see you all right here next time, but until then happy editing.